So I just came from training today. This is actually my first day joining the gym, which is, you know, to get rid of some of this stomach that I have down here. Um, <laughs> so I have training clothes on today. Today, we're going to talk about something I think is going to be quite exciting for you if you've never done PHP before, which is how to include files inside of the files or documents inside of the documents. And this is something we use a lot when it comes to PHP. And also, if you're just making a basic website that doesn't really have any sort of advanced PHP features in it, we still use them in order to combine different pages with other pages if you have a pure HTML and CSS website. So this is something that is quite fun to do. And it's something I'm quite sure you're going to find useful in any sort of project, whether you want to include PHP or not. Oh, I should probably take this off. This is from my training. There we go. So when it comes to including files inside other files, we have four different ways we can do it. As you can see in the screen here, we have something called include, include once, require, and require once. And they each have their different purposes, and it will give you a different response depending on which one you use in case you get specific errors inside your code. So just to explain how exactly these work, you can see that we have a keyword that is followed up with a semicolon or a pair of semicolons. And inside the semicolons, we want to write in the path to the file that we want to link to. So in these cases here, I'm just simply linking to a test.php file, which is in the same location as this particular page that would actually have the include statement inside of it. So if I have my index page inside a website and I have this include statement inside my index page, I'm simply linking to a test page that is inside the same directory as my index page. What this means is that if I were to have this test page inside a separate folder, let's say we have the main directory of our website where the index page is, if I have a folder there where I put my test page into, you would need to change the path here. So you would have to have the name of the folder forward slash and then the name of the file. So this is simply, you know, linking to the path of the file that we want to link to. So you don't just write in the name of the file and it just automatically finds it inside your website directory, which is you know the folder you have your website in. You will need to write in the path to the specific file if you have it inside a bunch of subfolders, just to mention that. So to kind of explain what the differences are between these different ones, let's go ahead and start with the one called include. Now include simply goes in and links to a file. And if it can't locate the file, it's going to throw you a warning message inside the console of your website. It's not going to stop the website from running and throw a fatal error, but it's just going to go and throw you a small warning inside the console there. So everything's still going to work like it's supposed to. It's just not going to load up the content of that particular file that we're trying to, you know, include inside our website. Include underscore once works similar to include, but it's also going to go in and check if you already linked to this document somewhere inside your website. So if you already tried to link to, let's say this test of PSP somewhere further up the page, it's just not going to run this include statement because you already included it once before. So it's not going to do it again. When it comes to require, it is going to throw a fatal error if it fails to locate the, the page that you're trying to link to. So if test.php doesn't exist, it is just going to stop the website from running and it's going to throw a fatal error, which is something that helps ensure that we know that there's something wrong if it can't locate this very important file. So if we want to link to some sort of file that is crucial to our code and is crucial to the website in order for it to run properly, then we might want to use the require method in order to you know, require this page. And if it doesn't exist, then we need to just stop the website from running. And in the other sense, you could also argue that include is used for, you know, not as fatal cases, you know, we want to include something, but it's not something that's going to break the website. It's just something that might throw out a feature or something that's not really crucial to the website. So in these cases here, you could just use include, but like I said, for fatal things, we want to make sure that we use require. And just like with include underscore once, require underscore once works in the same fashion. It works just like require, but it's also going to check, have you already linked to this page one time before? If you have, then we want to throw a fatal error because, oh, you're linking to this page two times in a row and that's bad. So, you know, it's going to stop the website from running if you're linking to the same thing multiple times in a row. In some cases that can be quite bad. So we want to make sure we only load in this content from another page one time inside the website. And now let's actually go ahead and talk about some practical examples because I can sit here and talk about how they work, but we actually want to see how they actually function inside, let's say a real website. So in here I have a very basic index page. As you can see, there's nothing really happening here. I'm even missing a bunch of the meta tags and stuff inside the header. It's just a basic example just to sort of illustrate the point I'm trying to make across here. So I have this basic 
index page. And what I want to do inside this index page is I want to include some different data from a PHP file that I have in a separate document, for example, called test.php. Inside my test.php, I just simply have some variables. I have variable A, B, C, and D, and they're equal to some kind of data or something. And I want to have this data and access it inside my index page so I can use it inside my other document. This means that I need to go back inside my index page and I need to include this include statement or require or whatever I might want to decide to use in here depending on what I'm trying to link to. In this case here, it's not really that important. You know, it's not something that's going to throw a fatal error or something really bad is going to happen inside the website. So in this example here, I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple include. You could also argue that I could use something called include underscore once because there's no need to include this multiple times. So, you know, unless I have a very specific reason that I want to maybe include this document multiple times, then it's probably just better to use include underscore once because we just need to include it one time, right? So in this case here, just as an example, I just used the most basic statement, which is include. And I went ahead and linked to test.php. Now, as you can see, I right underneath it simply echoed out variable A. And I can do that because we included that other document, which basically means you need to see the other document as them being included and becoming a part of this page that I'm including them into. So basically, if we were to see this index page, we're seeing all the, you know, the doc type at the top, the HTML tag. And then when we have the include statement, I just simply take those variables and you need to see them as just being sort of shoved into that document and becoming part of that document. And that's how it basically functions. The cool thing about using include is that we don't have to use the same code multiple different places. So let's say I need to use these variables in many other documents. I can actually go ahead and link to the same page from multiple documents. So I don't have to include and write the variables into the, the different pages multiple times. So this is something we can do in order to just sort of, you know, minimize the amount of code we need to use inside our, our website pages. But now, you want to see a real example. You want to see how can we actually use this right now inside an HTML and CSS website that you might have created half a year ago or something, or maybe you're working on a project right now, and you're looking for a way to incorporate PHP into your basic HTML and CSS website in order for it to actually be usable inside your basic HTML and CSS websites. So in this example here, you can see that I made a very, very basic and rough sketch of what could potentially be an index page inside a website. This would be a basic HTML and CSS example where the entire content of this website is just simply shoved into the index page. And as you can see here, we have the, you know, the, the HTML opening tags as well that surrounds everything in here. We have the head tags, we have the body tags. Inside the body, we have the header, which is just simply going to contain the menu, maybe a logo, stuff like that. You know, stuff that repeats on all the pages inside the website. If I were to go to my contact page, this content would also be in there. If I were to go to my cases page, I would also have the header in there and it would look completely identical in all my pages. Underneath the header, I have a section that just contains basic content for this particular page here. The content inside the section tags are just going to be specific for this page. It's not going to be stuff that repeats in all the other pages like the header does. So this is something that's very important to note here. And then below there, I have a footer tag that has a footer inside of it. And then at the bottom there, I just simply close off the HTML page. So with this example here, we can actually go ahead and make this a lot easier for ourselves. On this next slide here, you can actually see that, hmm, something seems a little bit different. I actually took the page and I ripped out the top part and moved it to the right side and just simply included a include once inside the left side. So basically what you're seeing here is that on the right side where you can see the doc type at the top, you can see the HTML tag opens there. The head is going to be in there with all the meta tags and the title tag. Um, all that stuff I took out and I put it inside a separate document called header.php. And then inside my index page, I took out the part that I pasted inside my header.php file. And I just simply said, okay, let's go ahead and include the header.php file at the top here. So as you can see, we're including header.php, which means that the code you're seeing here is the exact same thing as the previous picture you just saw where you had the whole thing in one line. There's absolutely no difference going on here when it comes to seeing this content inside your website. If you were to load this up inside the browser, you're seeing the very same thing. The header is going to be at the top. There's going to be a section in the middle and there's going to be a footer at the bottom. This is the exact same thing as the previous image. And now you might be asking, well, what difference does this make? What, what, why would I want to do this inside my website? Well, to put it simply, 
if you were to do it this way on all your pages inside your website, let's say you have a contact page, you have a cases page, maybe you have a portfolio page and you might have an index page. On all these pages, you just simply need at the top of your document, cut out the top section and simply put in an include that includes the header that we have inside a separate file. And once you've done that, the header is going to be included inside every single page inside your website. If you want to make a change at some point inside your header, let's say you need to add an additional menu inside your uh, navigation. What you can do is you can go inside one file, which is the header.php file and just simply change the menu inside that one particular file and all the pages inside your website is going to change. You don't have to go into every single page where you included your header and change the header inside every single page inside your website, which is something I see a lot of people do when they start making HTML and CSS websites for the first time. And you know, by doing that, they sometimes forget to add in that extra menu inside one of the pages or something. So having everything inside one document, you know, the header inside one document means that you can change the file inside one location and then everything inside your website is going to change. And the same thing goes when it comes to the footer here. You could actually take the footer at the bottom of the index page, which is the one on the left side, and just simply take the HTML starting from the footer opening tag and then take the rest of the HTML down, take that out, put it inside a footer.php file and just simply include it inside the index page and on all the other pages you might have inside your website. And then you just need to change the footer inside one specific document and then the footer is going to change on all the pages inside your website which is something that is quite handy just like with the header. And I think this is pretty much what I wanted to show you today. I know this is something you're going to be using because it is quite an awesome thing to be able to do inside your website. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.